Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and we don't have a crystal ball, but we do know, of course, all of us might have information, superior information, that is not official yet. If you have read and read a little bit more outside of the official space, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. The meta is going to change, and I'm here to give you a helping hand. I want to help you still get as much gems, premium currency as you can as we hit into a new revolving meta. And what do I think that is? Um, before we dive into the speculations of how it changes, let me tell you stuff that are concrete first. Meta is always changing. There's no way you can avoid it. We started off first and just a walk down memory lane since it's close to anniversary as well. We started off with a Zealer Zingyuan kind of hyper carry meta where everything revolved around one DPS. It made a lot of sense because the enemies didn't have too many strong monsters with a lot of gimmicks. You have very little resources. You want to put all of them into a single unit. It made a lot of sense way back then. Um, then after that, we shifted away and the first tilt into the meta or away from these two were really your arrival of the characters like Imbibitil Lune and Ting Liu. These were when these the beta characters like Blade, Kafka, all those were already over, which didn't really change the meta too much because we kind of already knew like the six characters coming to official launch. It's only when new characters like Imbibitil Lune, Ting Liu came about who weren't like in any beta test in 2022 and stuff like that. This was when the meta really started to shift and we really saw a destruction AOE meta coming into, into the picture. Still kind of like um, hyper carry-ish kind of style, which is a lot of new players still joining the game. Um, your experienced players might not have too much resources because you just built two teams and stuff like that. So it made a lot of sense. Then I would say we went into a third and we are currently in a third meta phase. And the third meta phase is probably a DOT team of like Black Swan as well as Kafka. Um, of course, there's one more that is, is like coming up, but we will touch on that a bit. So right now, I would say we are in a Black Swan Kafka meta. This is probably one of the more efficient best teams currently that go that's going around in Panicani. And of course, with the arrival of Akron, she just like caps it all off very, very well. A very different league of DPS altogether, but you guys already seen enough videos on that, so I won't comment too much on it. Um, we had in between some other characters that are good in certain content but are not like meta defining on their own. Some very solid all round characters like supports like uh, Ronmei, Fushen, all these kind of Silver Wolf characters but they weren't like totally meta defining. So what I think is going to happen from here on out is two things. With the arrival of characters like Aventurine and future characters, I think the first meta that is going to come into the picture is taking turns outside of the turn order for example, in a team composition with Topaz and Nambi, Aventurine, and who knows, other characters. What we are lacking right now is damage coming from all team members. Currently, we have it centralized in one DPS. Maybe at most, your supportive defense breaker is also a damage dealer. But your defensive units like Luo Cha, Huo Huo, Fu Shen, they don't really do too much. And for example, a character like Ranmei, a character like Sparkle, they don't do too much damage outside of being excellent, excellent buffers and supports on their own. In future, we will start to see and we know that we will have shifts. For example, a defensive unit that becomes more offensive in nature. A harmony unit that could be even more offensive in nature. So you have damage coming from every single part. So one, you are going into a floor up meta. Two, you're going into a multi-character DPS comp uh, that we are going into in the future. Why do I say that? We already see signs of it changing where you have Black Swan, you have Kafka in your team composition. This already forced people to go into a hybrid DPS, dual DPS kind of lineup. And with the arrival of Aventurine and other future characters that come up, we likely will see it shifting more and more towards having multiple DPS being very stacked. What does this mean for you? Because all these jibber jabber, yap, yapping and stuff like that is good. But how does it implicate your account? If you are a player who only plays hyper carry, Imbibitor Lune, Ting Liu, you have no, you are you don't want to adjust at all. You're just playing hyper carry kind of style. You might find it okay if you, if you keep pulling like the more meta hyper carry DPS. But in the long run, you will be just stacked full of your accounts with hyper carry DPSs that don't synergize with each other. So take a step back, pause, and think: What kind of characters do you play now that can be played with many other characters? Uh, and if you guys are too lazy to like think, I have all the answers for you. Check out our other videos on like, we talk about long-term characters to pull for the run, long run, power creep and stuff like that where we give you analytical analytical thoughts on who is the really out of all of these going to be the best five months, six months, a year from out. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can take a look at that too. But I'll just give you a long story short. One character example of that is like Kafka. She can fit into many, many team compositions for her DOT. Uh, whatever DOT thing, as long as it's still relevant, she will probably be there because she's both an offensive unit and a support. Uh, 
Um, that is the first angle that I'm going to. So you want to scale into the late game by picking characters right now that can fit into many many verse style comps. Who do I? Who? What comes to mind right now? Probably like uh, let's talk about four stars because five stars we're kind of locked, right? Whatever decision that you made, you are kind of stuck with it. So even if I say like, oh, this character here, uh, Silver Wolf is God tier. You might not have it, you might not skip it, it's just going to leave a sour taste in your mouth. So let me give you something that you can control. Of course, good characters like Pella, very very strong. I think characters, for example, that are supportive in nature like Ting Yun, you have your Gallagher, Lynx, all of these kind of units are definitely very versatile and very strong. You have Dr. Ratio as well, who is playing into a lot of these fields, Fallout of Attack, he's also playing into uh, imaginary team composition with Aventurine, and etc, etc. All of these angles are quite interesting to go for too. So if you have him, like maybe you don't build house bundles normally, try to like build him. I think he's pretty good. Other units like Xue Yi is also very strong, very versatile. You have Ting Yun here, Esther here. You have Gui Nai Fen. All of these characters are quite versatile that you can consider touching on. And if you want more detail on the characters, you can check out our videos on the channel. So that is come, that's two categories. The one that I think is more important is the third category. And so other than follow up, other than, uh, for example, you have uh, 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 multiple DPS. The last thing that I want to talk about is break effect teams. And I don't mean Ronmei specifically, but Ronmei is like not right now the only character that buffs break effect. But if you look slightly towards the future, the chances are, and what is the problem right now in the game that they want to sell you? So chances are they're going to sell us that character. If you have break effect at very very high amounts for example i have run me here how much is her break effect like 220 break effect the problem with break effect in general is unless you have a way to convert it to for example run damage bonus for the rest of the team if your dps has break effect you only have one bar to deplete once that blah bar is gone you'll basically have a massive amount of break effect stat that is totally wasted and at least not a very nice feeling because you it's essentially a dps loss for whenever the bar is down you could have just allocated all that massive hundred 200 stat into like attack percentage for example it's just something so simple and you'll be doing way way more damage what needs to be done is to have a continuous damage of break, break effect for example you broke the enemy once and then you keep doing damage that scales off with your break effect on whatever member you have and in future we are probably going to see a unit that's like that and that is why i think break effect is going to come a lot into the meta currently it is absolutely trash because like i mentioned once you break that bar that stat is practically useless ever again if you have run me it's, uh, it's, it's even more irrelevant because it auto breaks so run me was like kind of nerfed to a break effect unit that uh, was playing the her the same team in that kind of situation because that stat would be even more useless but moving forward if you can have damaging characters that hit enemies that do even more damage when they're broken run is going to reign supreme because she extends the duration of enemies being broken so that is where I see the meta moving three ways, and I think that is going to be the fourth meta shift. Um, characters that still play well is definitely going to be Akron. I think Akron is the pivot point of a changing meta, going from an old uh, 1.0 to 2.0 meta into now a new meta where it's revolving around multiple DPSs, follow-up characters, as well as going to break teams because that's if you ask if you ask me that's the best way to sell you now need more characters on an account means people still need to pull there's more requirements you can sell more harmony characters you can sell more dps's uh, to widen the roster if you look at the current limited characters in the game you we have every single one of every element you have imaginary you have ice you have wind you have fire you have quantum you have physical you have lightning so everyone you have one already and for example here black swan is like the second limited uh, win DPS, they try to make it different from Blade by making her D DOT. You have Kafka who's like playing to DOT as well, so slightly different. And then they put in Akron who is not a DOT, not a Jing Yuan kind of follow up hyper carry style. Uh, is and unique on her own because she has unique mechanics. So as we go on, they're going to need to sell us more and more different styles. And that is how I think that is going to go. I hope you found this video helpful. At this point, I want you to check out the other two videos on the channel, which is really going to value add to your longevity in the game. I want you to save resources. The more resources you save on better pools means that you can pull more characters you like in future too. And if you pre appreciate such content, like and subscribe for more of such honest reviews too. See you in the next video.